Hello and welcome to Voice of China, a monthly series exposing human rights, religious freedom, and rule of law abuses occurring in China. These are the stories of the persecuted. Hong Kong residents flooded the arrivals section of Hong Kong International Airport on August 12th and 13th to protest a China extradition bill, forcing the cancellation of flights to and from the former British colony. This is one in an endless stream of protests sparked earlier this year when Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam introduced a bill that would allow people in Hong Kong to be extradited to China for trial. The bill prompted concerns that Beijing would use this legislation to target individuals in Hong Kong, which has been a relative safe haven for human rights activists, and have them taken to China for prosecution, where courts have been known to prosecute those peacefully implementing their beliefs. In response, many have taken to the streets over the past months, clashing with riot police. The law enforcement officials have been firing beanbag rounds, rubber bullets, and tear gas at the protesters in an attempt to drive them back. But after they succeeded in blocking the streets to the legislative building in which Hong Kong officials were to vote on the bill, Lam retracted it for further modification. She did not withdraw it completely, however, lamenting that the people were not in agreement with what she deemed the bill's necessity. The protest culminated when thousands of protesters entered the arrival section of the Hong Kong International Airport, forcing the Hong Kong Airport Authority to suspend flights. Police entered the building, wielding pepper spray and batons, according to the New York Times. A clash ensued. Meanwhile, China is slowly amassing an army on their side of the Hong Kong-Shenzhen border. This is causing some experts to worry that the Chinese Communist Party might strike, much like they did during the 1989 Tiananmen Square massacre, which resulted in the deaths of untold numbers of student pro-democracy activists and passers-by. An elder from Early Rain Covenant Church in Chengdu, Sichuan, who was arbitrarily imprisoned in December, reunited with his family in August after being freed on bail. The elder, Li Yingqiang, was taken as part of a crackdown on the church that left more than 150 people in custody during the span of one week. During his time in prison, he was not allowed to contact with his family, and he was shackled and abused. He does not yet have freedom of movement since he is forced to report regularly to the local police station. His case is still pending trial. China Aid rejoices with the news that Li has been permitted to return home and urges Chinese officials to similarly release all other Early Rain Covenant Church members who are still in custody, including Pastor Wang Yi, who has been missing since the crackdown. Prominent human rights activist Guo Feixiang was released from Yingde Prison on August 7th after completing a six-year prison sentence due to a trumped-up subversion charge. Guo Feixiang is the pen name of Yang Maodong, a well-known writer, legal defender, and activist. Upon his release, Guo seemed unsure of whether or not he would be truly safe from authorities, likely fearing that he would be monitored by Chinese officials. During his six years in custody, Guo was moved around three different times. In the second location, he said something happened to him but declined to go into more detail. Human rights activist Huang Qi, founder of the website 64 Tianwang, lodged an appeal against his 12-year prison sentence for purportedly disclosing state secrets, according to new information. After Huang issued his appeal, lawyer Zhang Lei was cleared by government officials to work on the case. Zhang attempted to travel to Chengdu to meet with Huang's mother, Pu Wenqing, but was met by police who took him away. He was released later in the day. Pu has faced numerous difficulties in attempting to hire additional legal counsel. After securing a deal with a lawyer in Hangzhou, officials indicated the attorney needed to be approved in order to work the case. According to informants, Pu needs to make sure officials know the law firms any hired lawyers are associated with. They will be allowed to work the appeal case if authorities issue an approval. China Aid President Bob Fu was one of several human rights activists to meet with Vice President Mike Pence on August 5th, highlighting key areas of persecution in China. The meeting featured prominent faith communities targeted in China, including the mostly Muslim Uyghurs, represented by Chairman of the Executive Committee of the World Uyghur Congress, Omar Kanat, Falun Gong practitioners, represented by the Washington, D.C. Falun Dafa spokesperson Jeff Chen, and Christians, represented by Fu. Each representative presented respective summaries of China's persecution of the people in their communities, spotlighting the core issues of an ongoing Uyghur genocide, the monitoring of Christian churches, and the suppression of Falun Gong adherents. They also named principal members of these communities who have been persecuted. 
Fu then asked the Trump administration to utilize the Global Magnitsky Human Rights Accountability Act to sanction key Chinese authorities, including Xinjiang leader Chen Chuanguo, for their treatment of Uyghur people. The Global Magnitsky Human Rights Accountability Act, named for Russian accountant Sergei Magnitsky, who was tortured in Moscow and later found dead in his prison cell in 2009, allows the U.S. President to withdraw the visa of any person or entity entrenched in deep corruption or, according to Section 3, Clause 1 of the Act, is responsible for extrajudicial killings, torture, or other gross violations of human rights. Pence indicated the Trump administration's willingness to impose sanctions on China using the Magnitsky Act. For more information on the requests presented at the Pence meeting, please visit ChinaAid.org.